Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be a highly requested one again that I see in all my comments and everything like that. It is going to be a little tour of my Genshin account. This part is going to be all about my characters, builds, and all of that stuff. I'll be doing a part 2 possibly about other things like archives, inventory, and all of those separate things. Previously, I've released a video about my farming routine, so if you're wondering how I got all these characters leveled up, highly recommend checking out the farming routine or anything about character preparations, I also have a video on that too. Other than that, let's get right into this account tour, so let's get started. So since this video might be a little long, I have a lot of characters, I want to split it up into main characters like my main DPSs, and then characters that I've built, and then the characters that are halfway built. I don't really think it's necessary for me to mention the characters that I've paid no attention to, like there's no point mentioning Aloy when I know I haven't built her, etc etc. So if there's a specific part you want to go to, make sure to check out the description for the timestamps. Either way, let's introduce our first character that I'll be mentioning today. This is Rosaria, my first official main DPS. Currently, she's 80 out of 90, and she has the Dragon Spine Spear. I have built a hybrid Rosaria, which is cryo plus physical damage. As you can see, most of my weapons are 80 out of 90. I don't want to spend the extra enhancement ores and mora on raising it to 90. I just feel it's not necessary, and since there's no bonus, like the event weapons where you can get like 2 times or 1.5 times, that's why I just don't feel like raising this one. This is her artifacts. As you can see, it's not really entirely completed because I get no luck with her artifacts for everyone else I do, except for Rosaria, which is kind of unfortunate. I've decided to prioritize crit rate over everything else because she has talents and constellations all about crit rate. She is C5. Yes, I did get so many Rosaria copies when trying to pull for Ayaka. It didn't end up that well, but still, I'm really glad to have multiple constellations. As for her talents, I consider her talents finished. If you don't know yet, I don't raise my talents to level 10 or crown them because I feel like it isn't really necessary for me and I want to spend my crowns on a character that I know is worth it. I have invested a lot into Rosaria making sure she's almost complete, but I want to save these crowns and Mora and talent books for someone else or maybe when I have my final decision. Here are her stats in case you're wondering. I don't need a lot of energy recharge on her because I get a lot from my team. I have a cryo damage bonus goblet, that's how I get my hybrid part. A lot of crit rate and crit damage, I plan to switch this one out since the crit rate is pretty low, but the energy recharge is pretty high. Here is a quick look at her artifacts. As you can see, the circlet is also crit rate and then crit damage. That is all for Rosaria, so moving on to our next character. Klee was my first 5 star. I really enjoy playing Klee, but then over time, I get kind of tired of Catalyst users and her attacks are pretty slow. The weapon she uses is Zodoko Tails, Refinement Rank 5. This is from an event back in 1.6. Golden Apple Archipelago Gang, where are you at right now? I really wish the Golden Apple Archipelago could come back. I love the event so much. And I think this weapon fits with Klee perfectly, and I'm so glad that I got it. Her artifacts are the four-piece Crimson Witch of Flames. I feel like this is most beneficial for her since it increases elemental reaction damage too, and these are the kinds of reactions I do with Klee. She was built to be main DPS, as you can see. She has an attack goblet, crit damage circlet, and then I have lots and lots of crit damage for my substats. She has a Lava Walker circlet off piece because <clears throat> Crimson Witch of Flames domain doesn't give me good artifacts, but I still like this one because the crit rate and crit damage ratio is not bad. She is C0 because I never got to spending on her and I was kind of broke at the time. And then as for Klee, her talents are all completed as well at 999. These are her stats. As you can see, her crit rate is insanely low, but when I'm paired with Rosaria, as you can see, her crit rate is pretty low, but since I pair her with Rosaria and also add food buffs if I need to, which I don't normally, but it still increases that a little bit. Energy recharge is average because I have Bennett on the team. He can be a pyro battery. I mainly just need to focus on getting more crit rate. Our next character is Xing Cho. He's really good paired with Klee because his rain sword attacks pair at the same time as Klee's burst. He's a great support character. His best weapon is Sacrificial Sword. I have this weapon at 80 out of 90, Refinement Rank 1. I really like this one because I can use his skill twice and the energy recharge is pretty high. As for his set, he has a 4 piece Noblesse Oblige. I like this set on him because I can spam his burst since he has a lot of energy recharge. He has Hydro Damage bonus for his goblet, crit damage for his circlet. I need to replace this one, but the only reason why I haven't replaced it just yet is because of how high the energy 
energy recharges on the substat, and I don't yet have a better piece. Mainly his stats are not focused on the crits they are into energy recharge, so that's why you'll see how the flower does not have crit rate or crit damage on them. As for the sands, I don't actually have an energy recharge sands that's no bless obliged and would use good substats. I like this one, it has a bit of crit rate and crit damage to balance out for the loss of it on the flower. He is C2 currently, and his talents are 199. The reason why this is kept at 1 is because I don't use him for his normal attacks. Here is his ratio of crit rate to crit damage. Now, yes, I know this is really sad looking because it's 20% only, but I also pair him with Rosaria too, and a lot of it is in that energy recharge. And since he's not the one going to be doing the melt and vaporize crits, I can sacrifice a little bit of crit damage for energy recharge, which is why my energy recharge is really high on him. My next character, which is going to be Fischl, she was actually the first character that I ascended 80 out of 90. She uses the Favonius Warbo. This one's really good for energy recharge. Also, it's my favorite one to use. I know Stringless is pretty good, actually, but I just prefer the Favonius Warbo because of the energy recharge stat. And she's a great electro battery as well. As for her artifacts, they're also not completed. I was planning to do two-piece Glads or Shimanalas and then two-piece Thundering Fury. Originally, she had four-piece Thundering Fury, but it wasn't that useful on her. Currently, she has an attack percent goblet since she scales mostly off of attack. I like this one. Crit damage is pretty high. She has a crit damage circlet as well. The flower is a little bit lacking, which is what I need to change out. As for the feather, the crit rate is really, really good. But the balance of crit rate and crit damage is not the best since I have more crit rate than crit damage. But I also have energy recharge to think of as well. As for sands, it's going to be attack percentage, and I have crit rate. I need to exchange this one out too. I prefer to also have crit damage on this one. But as you know, the resin system, artifact, it's really hard to farm. Fischl is currently at C1 right now. I haven't managed to get a lot of constellations for her, but I think her C1 is also pretty good. As for her talents, I actually haven't raised her burst, and I've done her normal attacks. That's because sometimes I use Fischl's normal attacks back when I was still making my old team. I should use Fischl more often because I've kind of benched Fischl after I got Raiden, but I like having Fischl as an archer and long range shots. Also, when I'm doing Floor 9 of the Abyss, I don't have to run across constantly, and I can just shoot the enemies from afar. My next thing is going to be to level up the burst and also normal attacks, but other than that and artifact farming, Fischl is almost done. I'll try to move a little quicker along since some of these characters it's kind of the same way. For Bennett, he is 80 out of 90 and has the Favonia Sword. This one's good for energy recharge and I don't have Festering Desire since I wasn't there for the event. His artifacts are the two-piece Crimson Witch of Flames and, strangely, two-piece Wanderers. The reason it's Wanderers is because I don't have a full Noblesse Oblige set and I got really lucky with these Wanderers artifacts. His off-piece is the Lava Walker's Flower, but this one's good because of the crit rate and crit damage. As for his flower, he has a lot of energy recharge and crit rate on it, and for the sands, I've prioritized energy recharge, and the crit damage is really high for this one too. He has a pyro damage bonus goblet with crit rate and energy recharge. I tried to make sure energy recharge is on all the stats so that I can get the most out of Bennett. Again, I have crit rate for the circlet to balance out the crit damage, and then energy recharge yet again. I have Bennett at Constellation 2 right now. I find Constellation 1 extremely helpful, and the more constellations, also the better, except for C6. As for his talents, I have 9 and 9 and 1 for the normal attacks. His burst is the one to prioritize. These are the stats I have for Bennett, 56% crit rate and then around 80% for crit damage. He's mainly just a support, so I want to get his energy recharge as high as possible, but that is mostly it for Bennett. The next character is Raiden. She is one of my favorites and she is a great support and sometimes even a DPS if you need her to be. She is 80 out of 90 and her weapon is the Catch R5. Yes, I did farm the Catch R5 and yes, it also took me ages. But I'm really glad I got this one because the stats are great and I love the substat too. For this, I have 4-piece Emblem of Severed Fate, but I'm really not liking how the set looks right now because I have a 4-star and also an off-piece and none of the stats are that good either. For her flower, she has a lot of crit damage and energy recharge. I've also tried to do that in the feather as well. Now, if you're wondering why I did not use an energy recharge sands on her, the answer is because I do not have one. Yes, I have farmed this domain a million times and I haven't gotten a good energy recharge sands with good substats. Electro damage bonus goblet, this one is an off piece from Lava Walkers. It seems like Lava Walkers gives all the good sets, yet no one actually needs it. For the circlet, I have crit damage with a little bit of crit rate too. She is C0 since I didn't really spend on her, and for her talents, it's 199. Her burst is really good for doing those one shots, and I have been able to reach over 100k damage with her. I know it's not a lot, but for a free to play like me, I am really proud of it. Now for her stats. 
Her crit rate is really low, so pairing her with Rosaria is crucial for my team. Her crit damage is relatively high, as well as her energy recharge, but I still think Bennett's energy recharge is pretty good too. I mainly should farm the Emblem of Severed Fate set, but I keep getting Shimanawas or the wrong stats and everything else like that. It's just so problematic to artifact farm that I've kind of given up on that for now and want to prioritize talents. Next we have Mona, which is another 5 star that I have. She is 80 out of 90, and her weapon is the Wind Sif. I have not yet ascended this one, which I should actually do really soon. This one is good, I love it because of the crit damage substat. If you've noticed, my other characters don't actually have any of the crits on their weapon substats, which is why I really like using this one. I think I should get at least some of the Black Cliff stuff, but I haven't yet gotten to doing that. For her artifacts, this is surprising. There's no set bonus. Yes, because I just threw all of my good artifacts with good substats and didn't really care about the set. Some of these artifacts are pretty good. There's a lot of crit damage and crit rate on it, as well as energy recharge. A lot of energy recharge and some crit damage. Hydro damage bonus for the goblet, and then crit rate for the circlet to match out the crit damage in the weapon. When I was looking for artifacts for Mona, I just went through my inventory and I was like, okay, this is good, and I'll just throw it on Mona. Turns out this actually works really well. I was planning on farming Heart of Depth, but artifact farming just takes forever, and I wanted to not really focus on Mona, I wanted to focus on other characters instead. So I threw these artifacts on her, leveled her up, and turns out she does a lot of damage and she's really helpful for my team. Now for constellations, yes, I have Mona at C2. It is not a fun story. I one time got Mona and was really shocked. And then a few pulls later on standard, I got Mona again, and I lost the 50-50 on Ayaka's banner and got Mona. So now I have a lot of Monas, and at least it's making Mona better, I guess. For her talents, I have her at 199. These are practically done. I don't really need to level up her normal attacks. She's not a DPS. And I'm not really fond of her sprinting and those kinds of things. I just don't like how I have to wait until their sprint animation ends to really switch out to a character. I find it really annoying and hard to get used to since I find myself sprinting to cancel animations when I do catalyst users, and for Mona that's really difficult. So taking a look at her attributes, I did not throw together a set, and yet she still has some of the best stats right now than all my other characters. She has almost 50% crit rate and a lot of crit damage, and then a good amount of energy recharge. I do not understand how this happens, I barely put any effort into her. I plan on farming for artifacts later once I got all my characters' talents and also them ascended, but that is made me for later. Some of my honorable mentions include Beto, although I don't want you to look at the crit rate. Please do not look at this crit rate. Yes, I know it's 15%. She uses the Luxurious Sea Lord, and her artifacts only have a Thundering Fury. I really like Beto's playstyle and the parry and all those things, but I just haven't gotten to working with her. She actually helps in the Abyss. She helped me clear floor 9 and 10. Yes, I used this exact Beto. Her artifacts don't look any good at all. Every time it just rolls into HP, like HP here, and then more HP, like it seems like Beto is just stealing all the HP. She's constellation 1 and her talents are 188. The reason why they're 8 is because you have to ascend to get the next talent. I'm kind of holding off Beto's ascension because I have other characters to raise too, but I really enjoy playing her. Next is Xiang Ling. Her stats are 25, 130. Yeah, the crit rate is kind of low, but her energy recharge is the main priority. She uses Dragon's Bane, and her artifacts are Two Piece Crimson, Two Piece Noblesse. This is actually one of the characters that I'm really happy for the set because I wanted these two sets on her, and I don't have to use any off pieces. Energy recharge for the Sands. I just have a lot of energy recharge. She has Pyro Damage bonus for the Goblet. This Goblet, I got pretty lucky on, actually. Crimson Witch of Flames plus a Pyro Damage bonus. And then Crit Damage for the Circlet. She is Constellation 1, and her talents are 188. Xiangling is a great support, but I still need to invest a little bit more time and get her ascended. My last honorable mention is Jean. She has been my healer since I was still at a very low AR. The reason why I didn't ascend her with the rest of them is because I still haven't farmed her artifacts entirely and haven't figured out the spot for her on the team. She uses Lion's Roar and her artifacts are the two-piece gladiators and yes, she has a four star. Mainly, she's been stacked with attack, like attack on the goblet, crit rate for the circlet, energy recharge for the sands to get her burst up. I have crit rate and crit damage on the feather and then for the flower, energy recharge and crit rate. Constellation 0, and her talents are 165. I have yet to raise these talents. I'm probably going to do them a little bit later. I have other characters to do before her. I have a lot of characters to raise, and I'm still trying to get everyone to 80 out of 90. 
Let's take a quick look at my inventory. These are the amounts of XP books I have, and yes, I could potentially do that and raise everybody, but I'm still saving it and want to make sure that I raise the right characters and do it at the right time so that I can clear Spiral Abyss, but also build the characters I want. I have done a lot of collecting, so it's literally just a matter of spending on talents and stuff. Although my talent materials are running pretty low, I have a few dream solvents. I think I have around 50 or 51 dream solvents, and I haven't used any since. My routine for characters is saving during weekdays and then spending it all on the weekends. So I do all my farming on the weekdays and I get all the more I need, get the XP books, and then I wait until the weekend to spend it all. And then I save Sunday open so that I can always farm extra books or something like that. So that is basically a little tour of the characters I have on my account. If you're wondering why I didn't do every character, the reason why is because they either are unbuilt or I don't use them. I hope this gave you a little insight of how my characters work, and if you're wondering, some of the characters, my best characters, actually are on my profile page. So if you want to check it out, here's my new ID and you can check out the characters and builds I have. I hope you got some information out of this. I know it was really quick, but feel free to go rewatch any parts you want to see. If there is a specific character you would like me to make a guide about, I can always make a short video about it, or I can answer any questions that you have, so contact me on Discord or Instagram. Other than that, I hope you have a great day and are enjoying 2.7. I literally just logged in and recorded, so I haven't checked out anything yet. I wish you all the best of luck if you're going to be pulling, and I can't wait to see you in our next video. So I'll see you later!